recording. Jordan D, episode 67. Uh, this Ox Caravan. <laughs> Traveling R&D what, dude? What's up? Traveling R&D what? Just traveling R&D, bro. They shaky, know the dude. podcast. We're big enough now that uh, just dropping that buzzword. A little shaky, I should let him know. Drinking a Fremont Milo. Although I actually want to give a shout out to uh, my boy Scott Kelly in Wisconsin. Melo Rio. You keep looking at this screen when the camera's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Melo Rio, Wisconsin. Also, <laughs> the majority of people are just listening to this. Yeah, and now they'll know they want to get a Melo Rio okay. if they're ever in uh, Milwaukee. Um, My name's uh, Kyle Mil Lindley. Yeah, yeah. Georgetown, <laughs> drinking a Georgetown buddy Zappa. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's saying Melo Rio's in Georgetown. Anthony Brady, director of sports science, uh, also ripping a Fremont Milo. This is one you had last week. And just yep. named after the the, the right wing guy, right, Milo. I don't think that's right. <laughs> I don't think that's right. Um, Drive on R and D podcast, researching drinks. Uh, Caravan's back. He did make it back from Budapest for anyone uh, Barely. really worried out there. Yeah. And we got a guest today. Yep. I'm Jason Ochart. I'm the director of hitting here at Driveline and the minor league hitting coordinator with the Phillies. Let's go. Cheers to you guys. I'm drinking a guava craft cider. And, and, a, and a white claw. Dude. And if need be. Yeah. See how long this goes. A mango white claw, which Let's is tried go. and true. Probably good to be back. Boys. Probably the uh, most viewed, most listened to episode. No, and also our first return guest. It is our first return guest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Is he? Who else? It's a good question. I don't yeah. know. I think that yeah, we first, first return yeah. guest is the Ochar episode too. And and, okay. and mainly because of the views. Just to be clear, mm -hmm. if yeah. David Howell had had the <laughs> yeah, we're number one, around here. Mano, we'd have him back yeah, on yeah. next next week. I get it. The growth after the Ochar episode. We're we're trying to hit that again. So. Okay. And yeah. you're in town. Yeah. I'm in town. Which I think is the best place to start. Um, I guess like, I mean. There's a lot of things I want to talk about in terms of like how long it's been since you're back, what you kind of noticed with training, but first and foremost, just how is it being back? Being yeah, back it's been great, facility? man. It's been great. Um, I mean, this new facility is just insane, you know, and mm -hmm. it's just like keeps getting better. Um, everything from, you know, the weight room to the actual training to the tools we have, the, the R&D behind it, um, the athlete results. I mean, it just keeps keeps getting better. And it's kind of cool to be, a guy that like pops in, you know, because I think when you're here every day and you're kind of like, you know, in the trenches, you, you, you make just like incremental progress. And mm -hmm. as someone that is able to step away for like two months at a time and come back, you kind of really get to see how far you've come. And I think mm -hmm. when I was working here, you don't realize it because you just you just focused on today, like dominate the day, get it done, you know, get like one percent better or whatever, all those cliches. 100%. When you step out and then come back, you can say like, oh, my God, this place is way different. Like athletes yeah. are training differently. Um, the tools are better, the the whole process is better, the efficiency of the tr of the training floor, I mean, so on and so forth. So it's always cool to come back. And um, I also just love Seattle. I, I think it's a really cool city. And last time I was here was basically one year ago, um, and everything was locked down. I mean, like mm -hmm. most of the country, right? But, you know, I moved up to Ballard with, with Joe. Has Joe been on the show before? Yeah, mm -hmm. not yet. We got not you. Yet. That's on. a shame. Well, um, <laughs> it's an interesting that, that episode would just, like, there would be no R&D. It would all just be <laughs> chaos WWE. stories. The, yeah. the thing is, yeah. though, we could probably we could keep the same 50-50 ratio that we have right now in the show. <laughs> what we talked about God, off yeah. air, yeah. if Joe's on. So that's another reason to have yeah, Joe on the yeah. show. Yeah. If we have Joe on right now, 60-40, mm, good guys. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. But anyway, um, I moved in with him in Ballard. <laughs> Did you say good which is like, guys? <laughs> which is like my, one of my favorite parts of Seattle. And last year it was it was kind of a bummer because I couldn't really do anything. Yeah, for but sure. But this year, you know, I've been able to actually kind of go around the breweries and restaurants yeah. and stuff like that. But well, but no uh, no beers though, right? Um, I do my best, but but you've been cheating every been now and then. Yeah. Oh cheating. yeah. You, 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 how long in town for? What's that? How long in town for? I leave tomorrow what i know yeah dog where have you been the last 24 hours i literally said we got to do it on tuesday because he leaves on wednesday <laughs> yeah dude we got mini camp i gotta go back to clearwater florida dude dude I, i'm bummed you're leaving tomorrow when i when i uh hit you up on uh or like i said i was gonna hit you up when i got back and i was i was just dead i was just super dead from uh, like the last like i i i stopped at the airport then two times on flights there was like my last three times sleeping and i rolled in uh uh seattle like saturday night um damn that's a bummer dude but uh, so are you, are you just based out of Nashville for, for the rest of the winter or, or what are your plans? Um, so basically I'll be bouncing around like so I'm going to Florida. For okay. We have mini camp. So, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'll be there basically through the end of minor league spring training, which will be, I think, to like, I don't know, April or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then 
Bigley Camp, whatever that is. So yeah. it could line up where, like, you know, I go there, you know, middle of February, day through my early camp, and then Bigley Camp starts, yeah. and then do all the Bigley Camp. Yeah. And, uh, it's in the same location. Yeah, it's right? a bit of a bender. Yeah, Clearwater, Florida. Is there anything um, with what you were talking about, like, you know, it's nice to go away for a bit, come back and see the big changes. I definitely agree there. Um, I haven't had many experiences like that, but just getting out of here, like going to some of the conferences, um, like especially Wake yeah. a while ago, was a good like perspective shift, you know, reset. Because mm -hmm. we get caught up in our bowl. I mean, you're talking about, yeah, it's sick to see how efficient things are when all day, I mean, we just talk amongst ourselves, complain like, we got to fix this. Mm -hmm. This sucks. <laughs> this is hilarious. the most efficient, inefficient system yeah. ever. This is like total dog shit. We shouldn't like accept this. And then you come in and you're just like, dude, wow, this yeah. place is like, you guys are doing crazy Intense things better. here. Yeah. yeah. Is there, are there any like little things that, uh, that you've noticed on the floor that's like, oh shit, that, that's kind of fucking gas. You know, like that shit's kind of tight. Yeah. Uh, I mean, plenty, plenty of things like, you know, I think the, athlete meetings are really yeah. awesome oh yeah and that's something that i mean we, in the past it was sort of kind of you know you, you talk to the guy when he needs to have a right. conversation or whatever but now it's like you have these meetings planned out and the players love them right these guys love talking about their swing mm -hmm. or what they need to work for on. sure and um having those kind of like scheduled out i think is good plus like the meetings with high performance team as well 100 the integration it's really cool yeah all the integration oh um, yeah probably we weren't, we weren't even really using four stacks or, or, or force play stuff mm -mm. last summer in facility yeah and barely like, even meeting even hitting bomb mechanics like that is crazy like that's relatively new and mm -hmm. um it just comes so far from you know i reflect and now i'm i'm, I'm plugging it now but i'm writing hdkc for hitting yeah. and i'm doing a lot of reflection on like how far we've come in the history of driveline hitting and stuff like that and it's crazy to think like in four or five years it's like it's a completely different experience oh, some yeah. of the core principles are the same but like it, it's just way way better yeah um, and um obviously it is like like wouldn't get worse right yeah but uh yeah i think that just the structure of the training on the hitting side how we've implemented the big three mm -hmm. and how we've gotten a little more like precise i think with some of the training programs with the guys and giving them better kind of like feedback yeah and and you know creating their their training to, to kind of work on their area of focus yeah it's been better than it has in the i don't know it's just it's a lot of little things that add up to like the, the big product being with. that's what that's we, what we have more too, of a system yeah. too i was gonna say because before we, we, we had we had less we just had less athletes and everyone was just like you know grinding hard enough that few people would sub through the cracks if any yeah but like we just couldn't get away with that now we just had to like make systems and yeah. they've, they've held up pretty well i think mm -hmm. and, and they've lasted and survived the, yeah. the, the stress of volume you know yeah. And, and yeah plus like the caliber of athlete too which is another thing it's like yeah i remember in 2016 it's like oh this kid signed up and he's in like low a and he's yeah. like a 38th rounder. We're like high fiving, like, hey, yeah, man, like we made someone it. just so hit 90. Cool. And now it's just like oh MVPs God. and yeah. big leaguers all, all over the place. And it's just like, it's just no, it's normal. You know what I mean? Understand. And like some of the guys that come in recently, you know, they see, they see certain guys training or whatever. They're like, oh my God. Is yeah. That yeah. Him? And is that him? Is that him? And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it is. And it's like, it's Tuesday. It, yeah. It's just a Tuesday yeah. drive line. It's crazy because that was not the case, like, you know, not that long ago. Yeah. 100%. And I remember us being worried about like when someone good did come in, it's like, okay, shit, like we got to be yeah. doubly sure, like what we're, you know, bass speed training also makes sense for this guy who already yeah. swings hard as a motherfucker and mm -hmm. like is good. And then, like, yeah, like we've yeah. gotten really good results with really, really high level pros yeah. uh, without really needing, needing to change like too many things. Yeah, yeah. It used to be like at channel and Slack. Yeah. Everyone heads up, this person's coming in tomorrow. Yeah. Like, you know, let's get it together. Nicely, yeah. And then now it's just like, no, I never, got the, I never, never had to dress nice, nicely. Nicely, memo. <laughs> Nobody yeah. ever told me that shit. I don't even want to know what nicely. I do those wedding dog. You saw me. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. Okay, one thing mm. on the hitting side that is super interesting to me. So I feel like on the on the pitching side, not that it's like stagnant or anything, but the tools have been relatively consistent. Like we introduced a new plyo weight or whatever, yeah. um, and that's pretty new. But like on the hitting side, as we started to quantify like swing decisions, bat to ball, uh, more and more, for, like I don't know like widespread across all of our athletes sure. we have new tools too to try to attack those and the trainers get to be creative and try to attack those like figure out new environments new mm -hmm. drills new things like the thunder stick or just like you know yeah. the smash bat and the hitting smash balls and the hitting piles and shit like that 
um, to, to, to clean all those things up. I think it's cool how like we figure out what matters, figure out like uh, what we need to, to train and then we can like continue growing and how to actually attack those. It's been super cool to see on the, on the yeah. hitting side for sure. Yeah. Totally. And I think that's like part of what's so, so exciting polished. about training athletes in general, especially like large groups of athletes. But um, in particular in this environment, it's like there's so much investigation and so much mm -hmm. that we don't know and we're okay with that. And like, we're actually excited by that. Right. So like we know basketball skills matter. Like mm -hmm. obviously they matter. Right. Right. Um, we have ideas about how we can train it, but it's like step one is let's figure out, okay, one, how do we quantify it? Right. How do we assess it? How do we track it? Um, does it map to in-game results? Right. Cause like getting caged to game environments the same, is just hard, you know, and do a pretty good job of it, but it's, it's not always one-to-one. -one, right. Um, and then it's like, let's, let's just brainstorm and we have good coaches and, and good yeah. people here. It's like, what do you think is, is a good way to mm -hmm. train this skill? Right. You know, okay. Well, why don't you try it with this guy? And, and um you know create new tools like let's be creative about you know maybe we can use a skinny bat and skinny balls or we can use this machine with these like light flight balls or whatever smash balls that move all crazy and mm -hmm. target practice in the cage and and we do all these different things and kind of just naturally discover what works and what doesn't yeah and when you take the ego out of it it's just like let's just throw stuff against the wall and see what see what sticks and yeah uh, we've been able to discover like some of the stuff actually works. Yeah. W one thing that's really refreshing about you that I've always been a huge fan of is uh, you're always kind of like willing to ask questions. Like you'll, you'll post like, you know, videos of so some or like some random tweet by, by someone. I'm, like It might not have taken off at all. And you're kind of like, oh, it's kind of interesting. Like they trained this this way. Anybody got any thoughts? You know, like regardless of like yeah. your expertise or your, your experience in, in the field, you're, you're kind of always like thinking of new things and like willing to listen to anything as long as it makes sense and like potentially could be interesting. So, so I, I think that's really cool. I, I was going to ask, especially because it's been on the screen hitting motion capture something fairly new that we've kind of been collecting data got the db straightened out been doing a lot of passive data collection haven't done a ton of work yet but like something on a docket for sure this year i, I think we're all in agreement of that um like what do you what are you thinking like what kind of springs to mind uh for yeah. you if we're thinking about hitting motion capture i mean a lot for sure a lot of it's probably wishful thinking of course but i'm curious about a few things like first and foremost i mean how do guys generate speed right we know that bat speed and the ability to impact the baseball is like a really good indicator of success and we have a general idea of like okay being stronger helps you move the bat faster right but there's obviously like other aspects of it that go that go into rotating fast but are there like certain mechanical um patterns that help people outperform maybe they're like expected bat speed mm -hmm. based on maybe force plate data or, or general strength right yeah um i'm sure it's similar in the pitching side and the one that really excites me actually is is kind of related to bat to ball skills like we were talking about earlier is just the adjustability piece of hitting and i think that's fundamentally the difference between hitting and pitching obviously is it's reactive and you and you're not trying to repeat a movement mm -hmm. right which is what a lot of people actually try and teach but in hitting it's like it's actually you want some things to be obviously repetitive, but for the most part, you, you need to have like various movement solutions, right? You have to be able to hit off time, cover a pretty like large area of, of, of space, both like in height, width, and like depth up yeah. front and, and back. And like, we know from our, our best basketball hitters, like they're able to hit when they're way out front or late, they're still able to make contact. They're able to adjust their, their kinematics, especially late in like the, the sequencing. Mm -hmm lighten their chain or whatever you want to say like to make these micro adjustments to hit at the at the big league level right so i think we can hopefully bucket players by like their bat to ball grade right and say like okay yeah. here are the guys that are like 65 grade or better in bat to ball here are like the 30 great guys or worse mm -hmm. where are these guys that make consistent contact like where do they have solutions where the other people don't right mm -hmm. yeah maybe that's an oversimplistic way of looking at it but i'm i would suspect that like there are certain micro adjustments and my theory is like a lot of it's going to be at the elbows and the wrists and the hands and stuff like that just like more distal um segments basically but um i think you're gonna you're gonna find that these guys that have bad bat to ball skills are like more hardwired mm -hmm. in some of their movements it's like okay they bar out their arm and they, they get yeah. to like x degrees and like that doesn't change mm -hmm. right that's their swing really that's good their swing, swing. The right exactly and then um the guys that have more bat to ball skills like maybe they have just at different joints like 
adjustability essentially yeah. or like just like a wider range of potential uh yeah kinematics with, with timing too did you see the i just i sent it to dudo actually there was a video of bonds who like you could see it from a couple different views but a pitch came he recognized it as a curveball and you can literally see his body hesitate like he he strides we're talking about non-hall of famers bro <laughs> <laughs> he strides uh, like pauses for a second and then adjusts and then hits a home run on this curveball after like recognizing it yeah i think that's that's fucking nuts it's also i think gonna add another turn like layer of complexity with the biomechanics stuff because not only is it how they move and how those movements change but also how they change their the timing the aspect timing of, of it, it. yeah um which it's gonna be tough to unpack but yeah. well, yeah, we, we talked about it uh a bit with the dudo episode about how like um testing against smash factor is kind of like the efficiency in in uh in hitting mm -hmm. right because mainly it counts for bat speed ev pitch speed yeah so like mainly on the pitching side we we don't currently have anything to model for for command we could do that with like intended zone stuff could be interesting um but right now it's mainly around like velocity and durability right so like taking into account efficiency so those are the two yeah. main metrics that a lot of the models and, and stats are like tested against and the same thing on the hitting side because the first one initially was let's just you know focus on bat speed get a bunch of uh, correlations for things like that, like what kind of metrics and things. Yeah. Um, and Dudo mentioned it in the in the last podcast that accounting for smash factor would be another good one to kind of get that like bat to ball skills uh, parsed out a bit. Yeah. Right? The, so, the one thing though is because uh, our hitting mocap is off the tee, so so smash no, factor won't. No, 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 it's off the machine. No, it's off the machine. Oh, it is. Yeah. Well, it's off the machine the whole time. Yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. It was oh, off for a toss. It was off for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, then that, that's that's like never mind. Because yeah. I, I was gonna say that was actually we did which, the we did T stuff for some of the validation things like way yeah. back. Way okay, back. I mean that, that the hypes me the fuck up because I was gonna yeah. say the Smash Factor like relies on I mean yeah. relies like it's more valuable if you if you know the pitch speed. The next step would be mix pitch, mix yeah. pitch machine. The sessions would be just be way too long though. Yeah, because <laughs> even right now, like well, the machine eats guys alive yeah. sometimes. Yeah, how many swings? I mean, I, like, I, I still don't know, and I want to, I want to like loop in on the a bunch of yeah. biomech stuff pretty soon. Like I've talked to you guys about, uh, for for just like you know general project planning. But how, how many swings do people get? And also, like, how often do you retest? Is it the same model? Six minimum, weeks? Uh, minimum two rounds of eight. Okay. We've got up to like twenty six, thirty swings on some guys, but we only right now are cleaning and processing five swings. Uh, we're probably gonna bump that number up. We're taking like. Five best swings with the uh, best bad speed and exit velo, which as you were talking, I was thinking that through how uh, what we want to do is get all the swings in yeah. there from the whole session. So you get a better idea for uh, any like, variability factor. measures. Like yeah. uh, I think it'd be really exciting, yeah. like based on what you're talking about, like if people do make poor contact and you know, they're usually like yeah. a, a pretty solid, like battle ball guy looking yeah. at the variability there's a ton swings. of variability in this yeah. thing yeah. that's why that's why we went from because the first year i was doing when i was building out like the report in the pipeline mm -hmm. it was around three swings but the variance yeah. in the uh kinematics was just like all over the place yeah. so i had it. to had to bump it to five yeah. at minimum i, I still want to get more yeah like a few years back it was like version one of trying to investigate this particular like problem and i got a bunch of edgertronic of um big leaguers right and i yeah of like i would do one guy at a time right? i think when Gil cabrera was the first guy i was like all right let's get him on a high fastball where he squares it up a low a low fastball a breaking ball out front a, a pitch he hits deep swing and miss so on and so forth and like overlay them so yeah. like overlay two swings overlay then four and five and look at like okay where where are the videos basically like breaking mm -hmm. apart right so wh where does he have like the ability to change his mechanics and like you reminded me of it because it was a few things they like blew my mind because he was able to adjust the timing between foot up and mm -hmm. foot down right so it wasn't the same like cadence and i talk to mm -hmm. hitters about that a lot like if you have a like a very rigid like timing mechanism from like foot up to foot down you're gonna have a hard time adjusting mm -hmm. um that should be super athletic and like free mm -hmm. right um so that was one thing he did second was like the timing between foot down and like actually triggering his swing and like beginning his rotation that was was varied so he was able to like Damn. land and and like buy himself time and we're talking like milliseconds but in hitting it's like everything right yeah so he's able to like 
hold his hover or hold his his stride if he has to or after he lands he has like another option right where he can now wait and, and delay his swing a little bit and then in the actual swing like obviously you can adjust his side bend or like how long he he maintains like basically connection as we call it which is like when the hands and, and everything kind of rotate together right mm-hmm. and you see that on KVS where like yeah. everything's rotating together you can like hold it for pitches he needs to pull and then like release the barrel out front or he can like stop his torso rotation earlier and like swing out to right field if he wants to go out yeah. that's sick and it was crazy and it was like blew my mind and then on the hitting side like we kind of take a backwards approach to training that is like okay let's just create like crazy environments in a way to where like hopefully hitters will kind of self-discover these, yeah these movements because like most training is like the opposite you're just like repeating an a swing on like your honey hole like front toss which is like the worst thing you could do as a hitter right but um I think we can get more deliberate with it and like if we do find out that there are like two or three um like kit kinematic um i don't know what the right term would be but like i, I guess patterns. like what's that patterns patterns yeah exactly patterns or or um pathways or whatever like, that we what's that strategies would movie, be the right word yeah. Strategies, yeah that we dictate is like okay those are present in elite bat the ball hitters yeah now can we isolate it so like for instance let's say it's the lead arm extension and flexion right it's like okay yeah. we know that's a big deal can we create a constraint drill where like that's the only way you can adjust to pitches right mm-hmm. we have, you sit in a chair you know and like have flip them stuff and have them hit and like a pivot can... pickup hitting exactly yeah, it's no different than, than that and like same could be done it wouldn't be that hard to create those drills mm-hmm. for things like side bend or or um damn you know you know whatever like there's 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 a ton like when you release the barrel like just different sort of things yeah. we can do okay. and then uh my like totally galaxy brain idea too is like in uh you uh reminded me of it but like from a recruiting or scouting standpoint is like what if we can put up like create a crazy environment that's like progressively gets harder and start to find out like okay how are these guys like adjusting to being like, oh, yeah. blown up you know what i mean yeah. like let's just like just get a kid EG in like sensors on them and see how their uh, <laughs> yeah. brain waves are firing just start with regular bp and be like okay this is gonna like it's yeah. gonna get harder until you can't do it anymore but yeah. like just do your best right and see like yeah. you know machines throwing like 95 mile hour sliders just like barbecue these poor kids yeah. and see like what happens <laughs> okay like when he's completely screwed on timing like how is he trying to like yeah. go out and hit the change he has no chance of hitting it and we can see like maybe there's high level like patterns where uh yeah, yeah. other guys don't and maybe we can again like use that for for scouting or for for player development yeah that's what i was thinking too as i was as i was saying that was like it would be a pain in the ass to do mixed pitch from a collection standpoint to get enough good data yeah but then even if they're getting dice like that's still good data you know because we're gonna have guys roll through that are good at that uh and being able to compare against that, like that's that's almost kind of fine. Yeah. Like missing. The only person I've ever hit a 93 mile an hour slider during hitting mocap <laughs> did this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just like that is that's like pitching's version of someone coming in and throwing 72. You know, getting getting diced up, bad contact, uh, not really hitting the ball hard. So it's actually not a not a terrible thing. And a little bit of survivorship bias to to keep in mind too. Like like this person is doing this like. They can get away with this because of this, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. For um, sure. no, I mean that's definitely. So, I mean, we're, we're 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 still. I mean, we can always go back and uh, clean those pitches, right? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, right now, sports side intern summer twenty twenty two. Throw it out, baby. Do do. Uh, yeah, where we're at. Actually, the the new cleaning uh, process is pretty dialed. So I think going forward, we'll be able to start adding in more and more swings we're gonna we're gonna push it uh to see what gretchen can do now uh while she's cleaning remotely start to slowly like up those numbers as long as it doesn't like as long as we're not just dumping an insane amount of time into it but there's quite a bit of data from before early last year that we won't be able to get back Mm -hmm. um just learning a lot of things about pipelining along the way same same thing we did on the pitching side yeah. you know like there's some of the original yeah. data that just isn't going to work for model and marker sets and all that but we finally have a, a system down in place now where um things are looking good and, and some checks along the way so speaking of um high level data have you been to uh at the arizona facility yet no i haven't it's fun it's fun dude it seems like there's a lot of um 
they're like especially the hitting side like doing really well down there yeah there's some good players down there yeah it's really exciting yeah sick. yeah prig's doing a good job down there mm-hmm. even the even is the, still only prig even the on the hitting side watson and watts oh yeah. okay okay yeah yeah and steven pool yeah rooney <laughs> steven pool <laughs> oh <laughs> Wait, what? I, I heard that Matt, as Matthew Steven. Hart. I heard that Matthew as Hart. Steven Poole. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not Steve and Poole. Yeah. Grab yeah. <laughs> house, baby. Uh, I, I, I was going to ask you, like, all the drills you're talking about, do, do you find those, are, are those easy to map over to, like, people in the in the minors, like, on the Philly side? Like, Because, I mean, here, you know, we've talked on past episodes about how we have an advantage. People, like, kind of pay to train here. They already bought in. We can run out studies, have them hop on forest plates have them go through drills and they they you know they trust us we build that trust and, and we should get them results um how, how is that like on a on a larger scale yeah pro ball it, it gets easier every year for yeah. sure and i think it's become like industry industry standard uh maybe not standard but it's definitely become more popular amongst um like amateur and professional baseball right so like the the kids that we draft today like chances are they already do a lot of this stuff yeah mm -hmm. right they their coaches probably use pitching machines they do some mixed pitch stuff they probably have the driveline bats or they do overload training like like a very large percentage of them um and it's like part of our culture now so like as soon as you come yeah. in it's just what we yeah. do and like yeah. the players understand it too um whereas year one it was kind of like yeah. it was a little bit of a challenging um um change i guess in in how we prepare and and like everything right and uh it was met with resistance like naturally I mean, yeah all, all these guys are like routine oriented and stuff like that and plus it's like also humiliating to like swing and miss and bp yeah. right but i think um the first thing that we tried to accomplish was educate you know educate yeah. the, the players most importantly and then obviously the staff but like just get them to understand okay here's why i think there's a better way to do it and a lot of times we would just use like almost like the socratic method just like kind of lead them there just asking questions like Okay, how often do you swing and miss in a game? Okay, uh, yeah, this much. Okay, how often do you swing and miss in practice? Oh, no, I don't ever. It's like, all yeah. right, well, like, what, do you think that makes sense? Oh, I guess not. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, well, how do you think we can we can be better there? So on and so forth, and like lead them there. And then I think uh, the players now, like once they try it and they realize it prepares them better, yeah, then that's all that matters because these guys are motivated to, to make yeah. it to the big leagues. And now, like, we have no problems. Like, if anything, we, we get, like, complaints in the other direction. It's like, like, can we make it harder? Like, please, yeah. like, I'm facing 96 <laughs> today. Like, why are we doing an on-field BP? Yeah. Like, can I just get in the machine? Like, can you yeah. just set up the slider or whatever? Yeah. Um, so a lot of it's, like, cultural. But I think that um, industry-wide and, like, in, in particular with the Phillies, like, it's gotten significantly better. Uh, also, another random question I was just thinking: uh, What proportion of people do you guys think use weighted balls on the pitching side, and then use weighted bats on the hitting side? Good question. What level? Uh, we'll, we'll say pro. I'm oh. My my guess, pitching. I don't shoot. I don't know. Twenty five. Oh, well, well, most of the you slamming the over over fifty. That's saying, a lot. Man. I'm saying over fifty. Yeah. And well, MLB? I guess like use weighted yeah. balls in any yeah. capacity. Yeah. Not, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Not okay. Just drive line. Yeah. Just just yeah. any anything. You just like. Once a week, you throw in a, a heavier ball just yeah. to loosen up or whatever. I would say I would say over fifty in in warm ups for sure. Yeah, and I'd yeah. probably say less on the hitting side. Yeah, um, especially if you're talking about like deliberate bat speed training. Like guys yeah. will use like uh, a lot of guys have like a heavy bat. Yeah, but it'll be like maybe like a thirty four ounce. Yeah, you know that their yeah. bat manufacturer like sends them that yeah. they like. Uh, underloads are not as popular um, with people, and. Uh, but I think it's it's growing, yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely in the college level, like oh, most almost. I mean, almost every cage I, I go to, I yeah. travel around like they have weighted bats in there. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, I would say non-weighted ball users in in college are in the like very small minority. Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. And the, on the pro side too, I, I would be shocked if it was less than fifty. I, I think it's even higher than that. If if you're just counting like throwing a weighted ball at any point in your warm up, yeah. I definitely think uh, it's it's really high. I, I think it'd be hard to find people that don't um, even just like flick a reverse throw or just like a, yeah. a quick warm up. Uh, they're just in every bullpen at this yeah. point. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not a not a yeah. You you could hundred percent 
say that every organization has someone that throws away the ball. Exactly. Like, yeah, for sure. Hundred percent certainty. And in in college, I man, it would be so hard for me to. I I haven't had a conversation or or seen anyone that is just like as anti weighted balls as people used to be in 2015, 2016. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like it's not anymore. It's a total opposite. It's everyone wanting to get into it because it's it's so prevalent. Yeah, and it's pretty pretty opposite now. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen a change? We got a question on Twitter about the in-game uh, or like pre-game preparation that you were talking about. Have you oh, seen yeah. a change throughout um, your time with the Phils? Yes, I have for sure. Like we we implemented um, a lot more like advanced work, I think, advanced information mm. than maybe there was in the past. So I think using that info, like advanced scouting, you're saying, yeah, advanced scouting on on opposing pitchers and people yeah. are like where most players like didn't have a ton of info yeah. on there. Like, you know, they might know like what he throws or his yeah. velocity or whatever, but actually using it to make like a, a game plan. Yeah. Um, and have like a team plan too. is like kind of new. So I think the next step there is like, how do we now use our, how does that impact our work? Right. So if a guy has like a lot of sync, for instance, like your ball flight should probably be higher in the cages, your machine should set up to a two seam. Yeah. Um, you should try and mimic the pitch flight if you can. Yeah. As best you can, uh, pitch shape, I should say, and then, you know, you you can kind of prepare yourself like deliberately for that pitcher, uh, and I I think that's happening like everywhere at this point. Mm -hmm. And the machines now are like way better than they were even like a couple mm -hmm. years ago, um, where you can input like you know spin rates and general yeah. like characteristics and get like pretty close, and, and then yeah. like adjust the uh, release point and, and stuff like that. So I think that's like pretty standard. Where I don't think that was the case maybe like years ago so i yeah. have saved like profiles too right totally like saved uh characteristics based on like big leaguers or whatever yeah yeah it's not that hard to to do that with a machine and kind of like build out arsenals basically mm -hmm. for pitchers you know you're gonna face so i feel like the the gyro spin uh machine like a machine that can do gyro i know there's some out there um i feel like that's like one of the biggest untapped yeah. unlocks in hitting specifically because even though you can match Maybe the break profiles or try to replicate an arsenal. An actual like spin split profile, like pitching top spin, yeah. side pitching spin machines gyro. right now, like the yeah. general ones. I pitch all those. They they still can't do gyro, oh, yeah. you know. So have you used? Have you had guys use uh, any of the newer ones that supposedly can do gyro? Um, no, I haven't seen it in person. Mm -hmm. I haven't yeah. seen it in person. I've seen them in videos. I haven't seen them in person either. Yeah. Yeah, I, I only know that one mm -hmm. on the market. That's the yeah. only one I know of. Yeah. They can actually do a uh, great gyro spin. On like a on like a good trajectory, totally crazy. And I, I think the piece that is missing with machines is just like the visual data you get like beforehand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which uh, we've seen it when we when we the did context. like haze tracking and stuff. You know, it's like yeah, off a pitcher. You know, they kind of like hover right above the head and then kind of shift the release point. Yeah. Where on the on the machine they just kind of like they stay yeah. locked on where the ball comes out yeah. and the timing cues are different and then like. We don't even like totally understand like what a what a hitter sees when they like pick up a breaking ball or a change up or yeah. even a fastball or whatever. Like as far as I know and I've studied the subject like like a lot, like I don't think we totally understand what visual cues a hitter is picking up. I think yeah. a lot of it's just like subconscious and, and it's like stored data basically yeah. from repetitions oh, yeah. throughout your life. But it's something that worries me a tiny bit with doing motion capture off the off the machine. Like it's gonna be the all of them are going to have limitations, right? If it's yeah. not live pitching, yeah. but um, like, because it, I feel like I can pick up sometimes, like after a hitter's been, you know, they've taken like 10 swings or whatever off the, off the machine, they'll start to, like, there's a way to cheat the machine, right? Totally. Like you get the timing down, you start striding mm -hmm. and then you're just shooting for like one location. Basically, you know what pitch is coming and you're just going to start your swing. Yeah. And then some guys just like, I feel like it shows up like the old start their swing, basically check swing a good amount of times because they're just like, go, go, go yeah. uh, to try to time it up. Or Dude, whatever. I get myself up with feeds sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, like what? Dude. That's a thing, man. Like if coaches Bro, can't beat the machine, right? it, like, yeah. you, you will screw up hitters big time. Dude, it's like uh, anytime I've had to like go out and help in the lab and do hitting stuff, it always takes me a few to get like how I'm holding the ball and placing it in, you know, yeah. not trying to hit that oh, back edge. Yeah. But now now i'm i'm not too mad about it because i'm just like i'm creating a little chaos in the environment that's a drill. I do that's <laughs> actually a you know like oh whoops i hit the back lip of the feeder yeah 
Congrats! Now your timing's a bit off. It was yeah. a bulk. Sorry about the sorry about the cap shot. But. Yeah. You do that intentionally? <laughs> yeah, all the time. That's it's, sick. It's like uh, I like accidentally stumbled across it, but like there was yeah, a particular me too. machine. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm still intentional. Yeah. There, there was one machine in particular that was like really hard to feed, like the um, like the uh, what would I say the diameter, I guess, or the circumference right. of the of the where you put the ball into yeah. is like. Literally clank like the rail. two yeah. millimeters wider than the ball, yeah. so like it has to be perfect. Yeah. So I was like clanking it in there occasionally, then it would like kind of yeah. roll in slowly. And uh, I just like noticed subjectively that the better hitters like were unfazed. Yeah, like they almost didn't even notice. You know, they would like wait, and then the like, ball comes out, and then they hundred percent. Yeah, and then the other guys were like falling forward, and I had like yeah. no chance. And it caught my eye. I'm like, that's actually kind of interesting that like yeah. these like the like the really good. Uh, hitters are like outperforming on this yeah. particular drill, and, and then I started doing it on purpose and noticed that like it it, it kind of fixed a lot of what you reference, like or mm-hmm. when you guys reference, like when guys get off a machine, especially if they're like really like rhythmic, they can like just watch around and get kind of the tempo in their head. It's like mm-hmm. feed hit, feed hit, and then they can just kind of like cheat to that point. They solve right? the game. Yeah, yeah able to exactly. So yeah. if you can adjust the feed, like even if it's milliseconds, like, yeah. it keeps them honest and keeps them like quick because you have to be quick yeah. to hit. And I think it's especially true, uh, and that's like another issue with machines, right? But like when you talk about breaking balls, guys throwing them a slider or whatever, um, and they'll hit, you know, off the, off the breaking ball, but they know it's coming, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like how often do you sit? Most guys don't sit on breaking balls. Some do, but like, you ha- all your reps off breaking balls are like you know it's coming and you got it timed up and you're hitting right mm-hmm. um so we encourage guys to do things like try to trick yourself into thinking it's a heater and adjust because most of the time you hit a breaking ball it's like you're actually early kind of like the miguel cabrera example yeah you're like get your foot down on like a fastball timing and adjust off it and it's kind of hard to like to hack your own brain like that yeah but now the machines that like randomized pitches help do you oh, use yeah, that, that, that all the time. yeah a lot that's sick that's dude yeah. i feel like it's tough because of the what you mentioned about not having the pre-pitch information um like about how the how the pitchers are moving like i'm pretty convinced that um small changes in like forearm or wrist position or whatever can be picked up so if you don't Mm -hmm. have that i feel like dude a random a random pitching machine probably fucking kills right yeah Yeah. dude it might not even be stuff like that i think you could go i mean you could see it in the in the lower half or upper half i think there's tons of just uh movement patterns that the pitchers have um on breaking pitches i gotta think it especially at the level like in the big leagues when you faced and seen someone enough times i, I feel like they could just answer you know what's coming a, a, a lot quicker than anyone else after yeah. just just seeing it getting a feel for it you know and some of these guys like they i mean they black out like hitting is just as far as i'm concerned completely like out of body you know like, oh yeah, and they'll, they'll take like ridiculous sliders, you know, just miss, and, and they, they don't even like flinch. Mm-hmm. It's just something about like they'll just take it, you know, with two strikes and just mm-hmm. take a slider that just breaks out, and you're like, how in the world did he do that? But there's something at some point that we're just right. like it triggered like a nope, in his yeah. Head. And, like who knows? I mean, it's like they're they're supercomputers, right? Mm-hmm. These guys' brains and like we don't think really bro, EEG it. EEG activity, <laughs> run it back, um, dude. But, which would honestly be kind of sick to bring back, but but I feel like you need just a large sample, mm-hmm. uh, both like insanely large sample. But, but we have oh, both for each subject and an amount of subjects. Like like the, I mean, same thing we ran into with gaze tracking. Yeah, but mm-hmm. even compared to gaze, EEG yeah. is still probably like the noisiest yeah. possible data set you could collect. Yeah. You may not be able to talk much on this, but are you guys like have have you guys incorporated any of of that type of training with minor leaguers that you've like identified might need some like visual vision or some like yeah a little bit a little bit um done some occlusion stuff and kind of nice. dabbled in some vr and stuff like that but yeah n- nothing that um i'm totally confident works yeah <laughs> to be honest yeah, yeah, like yeah. and every year when i go to conventions and stuff like i think it gets better mm. um but i don't i don't think we're there yet no yeah, and I could be wrong. Maybe it, maybe I won't be an early adopter. I, I, I was going to ask because I, I know we've talked about it like years ago. Like, have you kind of like what are your thoughts on current VR products out there? And like, do you think it's still something that that makes sense? But there's not like a good one on one for actual hitting training. Uh, something there's already good products out there, or or just something that's too far away. Yeah, there's some good products. Um, I have like some really like I have some concerns. Yeah, with um. The fact that we don't really understand what guys yeah. know, what they look for. Yeah. Um, and then when you take a skill or you take like a training experience that's so 
similar to the actual game, like it can get really sticky, right? And so if, if you now have like you throw on his headset and you know you're facing big league pitcher or whatever, and his slider like on that program is is not the same visual cues that happen in the mm-hmm. game. Right now you're adding like stuff we mentioned like that database earlier, right? Like now you're adding like a lot of reps mm-hmm. and a lot of like sort of data points of like wrong environment. This data equals this, you know, whether yeah. it be timing related or or pitch um like tipping or whatever, like it's getting so close to the actual experience that if it's not perfect, it could really, really be harmful. Yeah. And yeah. I have those concerns because like I put them on and I think they're cool. Like, you know, like I, I think there's applications that you can roll out immediately, which is like you know, timing a picture that has maybe like a weird, like a slide step or a funky kind of like, you know, Kershaw has like that little yeah. like pause or whatever, like, yeah, like stuff like that. I think you can maybe uh, use, but when you get really down to like the pitch recognition stuff, I'm not convinced from like seeing it and the hitters that have tried it too. Like most of them say like, that it's not quite there yet. Like it right. doesn't really look like a change up. Yeah. You worry about like overfitting to something. If you're not like a hundred percent confident in the response variable, like what it tells you. Yeah. And then you're just going to build like, yeah, what build a model off it yeah. or, or build training off it. And then you're overfitting to the wrong thing. Yeah. yeah. I you think know, of it like, more as like a, like a training economy decision thing. Like if, you know, um, tons of obviously the baseball tech space and training tool space is like crazy saturated right now. <clears throat> and like VR, AR stuff and hitting, it's kind of like, the flashy thing that everyone thinks they need when just, you know, need under, under, raw, under, raw, under basic, load. just like bat speed yeah. would, would do it. You know, like you would yeah. get, there's so much more low hanging fruit with the uh, way better gains, but uh, I don't know. Everyone, th- this happens in all fields. It happened in pitching, hitting right now too. I'm sure it's just like chasing the newest flashiest thing when a bat dongle and knowing your bat speed would just be like, way more yeah. valuable early on right like totally. you could just crush reps and reps and reps and you're still swinging the bat slow it's like exactly you know it's like yeah we could you could have the best swing decisions in like history of baseball you're still like ever gonna play professional baseball right like, you can't hit, right. you can't hit a ball like yeah you know. i think i mean i think that happens in all things like uh even being out on the floor right now training with a lot of the athletes like they'll come up to me every now and then and they'll ask like really specific uh like biomechanics questions about like certain metrics and parameters, Don't you know, ask how, how, how do you eat so many dicks burgers and throw <laughs> gas? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's the secret, bro. And, uh, and it's just like, you know, I always try to like roll back the simplicity of it. Yeah. Um, cause I used to be that way too, where I was super honed in on every possible like metric and advanced thing. Um, and you know, just, like smaller things, whether it's uh, looking at the system as a whole, simplifying it, yeah. or even at one point, some guy was talking, I was like, look, if that number on the board goes up, good. If it goes down, bad. Like, you know, stop stop worrying so much about uh, pelvis angle, foot plan, yeah. or all this stuff, or also just like take take a little bit of time, go spend 12 weeks in the weight room and try to put on 10 pounds. You know, yeah. like you'll, go, go there's just like so much YouTube easier. Yeah. yeah, so much easier stuff. It's not what they want to hear, but sometimes... Well, that, yeah, just the way it is. Like, it's got to be like where you come in, what you're trying to get to. I'm sure it's different uh, minor leaguers and, and professional players. Like, yes, there are products where I mean, you're already talking about 99th percentile athletes that are trying to, you know, just eke out the competition by very, very slim margins. So like, yes, mm-hmm. but you being, you know, Juco upper, upper 70s, low 80s right now, like you know, the, the newest gadget isn't really going to, um, like take you yeah. to, to getting more playing time or whatever. You yeah. Know? I think it's so true in hitting too, just cause it's so like feel based and everyone can remember like the one time where I got like, you know, three hits a game for a five yeah. game stretch and everything felt right. You know, if I could just do that, like I'd get drafted yeah. or whatever, but yeah. it's like you, t- you tell them something like, okay, based on these, you know, these numbers, that are very accurate um we can predict that you know you're not good enough and you need to improve yeah. this and um sometimes it's not as, yeah. as sexy as like yeah you know you fix your hip coil and, and you're gonna it's gonna click for you and it's yeah like, actually you know you, you here's your roadmap to, to becoming the person you want to be because like anyone that 
truly is motivated and dedicated to become a big leaguer, like the first question they said to ask is like, where am I? Where are they? And like, yeah. what's that delta, right? And then like, most importantly, as a coach, it's like, how do we get you, you yeah. know, closer, right? Or to that point. And it's interesting because like, we talk about being data driven, like a lot of players don't know, like they just, they have no idea why they're not good. Yeah. And sometimes they get upset because it's, you know, it's like, oh yeah. And pitching people know, cause everyone throws their radar gun. Right. And I think this is where hitting is. It's like where pitching was, I don't know how many years ago, like before I was even in the game. Cause like, even when I was in college, I knew I threw 85. So it's like, I'm just not <laughs> just good. Ain't it. You know what just I mean? It. Um, no, no, you can look at still, man. you know, you there's locate. a little voice in my head. You can, maybe, you can, yeah, maybe. You can spot up. But in hitting, it's like people aren't that aware of bat speed. And, and it's kind of like growing fast now that kids have access to blast. Yeah. And also like big league games, they see like, you know, the exit velocities. Oh yeah, like Okuni hit that ball 116. And, right. You know, and our whole, everyone in our minor yeah. league system's like, it's not a secret I can't anymore. Do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, so it's like, that harsh reality sometimes it's like if you're actually motivated it should be like inspiring it's like okay cool now i have like something to chase and we have a program and tools that like have worked for other people yeah you know and then they can get to work whereas i think guys that don't really want to work they look for that cheap fix they look for that overnight yeah. thing that, and that's those are the guys that buy the i think they're gimmicks and i think they're hard especially hard workers and like you know guys that are like crazy addicted to kind of chasing that yeah that also do fall into that trap just because they're they're constantly chasing more and it's so easy to see an anecdote of some guy's performance yeah. and attribute it be like oh that's what he did i mean i was thinking about this the other day how um i, I used to choose certain types of water because at some you know tom house uh coach's certification there was this nutrition guy that came in and he was like talking about how you know, water, Alkaline plus water with uh, uh, TDS, total dissolved solids. I think those hires like better and stuff. And I made all these decisions around these like super minute things <laughs> yeah. that I thought really mattered. And I like went into college freshman year, at, you know, a buck 60 throwing decently hard, but I was so convinced that, you know, all these very uh, microscopic things that I was like, like chasing were going to equal that. Um, but I mean, you know, yeah. And yeah. then I kind of just degaffed a little, and uh, stuff got a lot easier. Honestly, I, I, I got to bounce. I, oh. got, I got the yeah. word word. Right. Yeah, enjoyed it. Yeah, no caravan. Uh, but uh, you want you want to keep it rolling? Yeah, we can keep it rolling. Now that he's gone, we can talk about some. Yeah, let's go. What's up with that? The podcast just got a lot more PG <laughs> yeah. right now. So, <laughs> I uh, yeah, my my hair, my Where arms is relaxing. Yeah. And, I thought he was in Ukraine. I thought someone told me he was in Ukraine. I'm like, isn't there like a war going on? Right now? <laughs> I think Joe is messing with me. He's like, yeah, he's in Ukraine. Joe's right. I'm like, that's. I don't. Like I don't know person. where it was. Uh, he went home, right? Yeah, he was, he was in Romania oh. uh, for a bit. Spent some time in Budapest. Um, yeah, he was, he was bouncing around, bouncing around yeah. Europe with his mom for a bit. But Jay, Jay had a uh, question about. So, like, when you first started with the Phillies when you first came into driveline, like a lot of the things that we were doing here and the other people were doing were like buying more tech, taking more measurements, uh, wearing more stuff and getting more information. And my perception is that it has slowed down a little bit and kind of trans like, you know, just change direction into like a more, uh, how do we use this or how do we, use what we currently have let's stop like measuring more stuff or stop stop trying to find the next like measurement or whatever sure and then and more like how do we use it better how do we just like change our like soft not i don't know maybe softer is the right word softer side of like coaching or whatever what's yeah. your where do you think the that uh like needle lands with pro ball and like here uh even at driveline yeah that's a really good question now i think there was a bit of a gold rush, you know, in, in professional baseball and, and probably in college, high school baseball too, mm -hmm. because all these vendors came out and, and then there were teams and facilities and um, organizations that were having success with it, right? And a lot of them are siloed, especially professional baseball. People are like, oh, I'm just doing this and they're really, and they're winning, you know? So it's like everyone kind of panicked and there's a little mm -hmm. bit of like FOMO or like, what's kind of like, let's hire people from that org and figure out what they did, you know? Yeah, and, dude. 
and people were just like throwing money, you know, just like, okay, uh, cameras, boom, let's get cameras everywhere, you know. Um, yeah, oh my God, tried. that was one yeah. of the most absurd ones, right? Yeah. Buying, like organizations buying a hundred edgers. Just or all the edger trucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. every poll, just put an edger yeah. truck on it. And uh, same with like bat sensors and, you know. Uh, biomechanics labs. VR, biomechanics, like all this stuff. And they built the infrastructure like way before they built the, uh, like the actual systems in place and oh, like a thousand percent that the, that the, the systems is harder right like especially mm. when you talk about like how do we collect insightful data both in training and in playing um in, in in game i mean and how do we generate insights out of that that are not noisy that are like valid mm. that um you know we can explain the coaches and then to the players yeah how do we use that how do you make it actionable to actually like make players better right it's, it's like a hard yeah. problem especially when you start talking about like 200 plus players dude that is that is hands down the biggest like dgaf change for me mindset wise in the last two years where when that wave happened everyone's buying up biomechanics labs everyone's doing all this stuff there was like a point where it was like you know our data set's pretty sick and the stuff we're doing that's kind of like our secret sauce right so let's kind of you know keep that ours not really let it out yeah. we're gonna do our thing um but lately you know just seeing teams orgs all the you know coaches kind of spend a lot of money in certain areas uh and not get similar results or even just use it actionably like we do yeah just highlights the the point of you know it's not the it's not the hardware it's the system underneath yeah. right yeah. you you have to and that's the reason we were able to do what we were do, do what we were able to do is because the OG days of Bodhi building a biomechanics lab from scratch. It wasn't yep. he got a biomechanics lab because everyone else had it. It was he built a biomechanics lab because he already had a system in place of data driven training where he was testing, retesting, monitoring how athletes were changing. And he was like, I need another data point that I'm missing. Here's how I'm going to do that. Yeah. Whereas now a lot of teams are just like, the FOMO, they're doing this. I see them buying this. We have to get that. When yeah. they don't even have that system in place of like, okay, I'm going to take a picture of where you are now. I'm going to train you with this program and I'm going to take another picture in like a few yep. months and I'm going to find out what worked, what didn't. Mm -hmm. Having that like foundational system in place is exactly what you need. And it could just be done with, I'm still convinced, like a radar gun and a bat sensor. Yeah. Like if, you know, you don't need all the other stuff. You just have that and approach of like, we're going to focus on like these two numbers. We're going to make them go up and like, that's it. We're yeah. not going to get like the latest tech. We're just going to focus on this. Right. No, I think that's spot on, man. I think that's spot on. And like, that's how athletes think too. Like they want very clear goals, right? They don't want yeah. you to like, they don't want to drop an well. eight page like spreadsheet in front of them. It's like, okay, work on like these, like 75 different. Yeah. Things, you know? it's, like, 100%. What? it's like, no, give them the target that's objective and, and a tool to measure it and yeah. like ways to improve it. And then, them go up. they're too smart nowadays too yeah. They, yeah they have access to too much information like twitter instagram all that stuff plays so well yeah. so like you got to be equipped with uh ready to answer their questions if they heat check you for they sure will. and they will i mean yeah they will especially nowadays these kids have you feel like it's it's like changing more and more like yeah the younger guys that come in totally. they're you know asking for more data they already have a feel for the metrics yeah they you know. pointed a number they're like oh yeah my connection they already like know the definition they know it stuff. yeah they know it and like that is why you know this might not be standard at like the highest levels of baseball right now like particularly the big leagues but it just it's just going to be in like five years because yeah the players that we we draft and we sign like they know they know this stuff you know what i mean and, and they the last two three questions to a coach Hey, what do you think about like my slider? Have you looked at my, you know, my my spin rate or my vertical break, or horizontal yeah. break? Do you, my movement profile. What do you think about it? You know, yeah, it's good. You know, you should finish out front or whatever. They're yeah. like, oh, okay, you know, and they're yeah. just like, they know right away. Like, <laughs> they're just shit. texting their old coach. Like this guy does not shit. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just, <laughs> like, just like that's just a fact. And I think that uh, not true for all players, but for the most part, especially like the really, I don't know, the really motivated ones, I guess. That are yeah, really, the guys that like really want to be a master of their craft like yeah they have done their homework i think it's just get, they're like as it gets younger and younger it's just going to keep growing yeah um as as more and more 
of them come up, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm really excited for, in the long term, uh, the, the coaches, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now that are the players who have played in this kind of like, yeah. you know, environment of a very data rich game yeah. where they understand it. They, they've kind of gone through the experience of applying it with themselves. Uh, Cause I think that was one of the earlier, and I think it's fair in some cases knocks on this revolution with like data and analytics and everything is the whole, you never played the game, so you don't sure. understand it. Yeah. I do think there are elements of that that are like, 100%. you know, you should not ignore. Yeah. Um, obviously there are other sides to it, but the player that has kind of played through this, uh, this system and this environment over the next you know, decade or so, and then afterward they decide to get in coaching when they're already equipped with all the knowledge, yeah. they have the personal experience mm -hmm. of the dugout. Like those are, you know, those are the future coaches that I right. think are just gonna be like, damn. You know, they're going to get it, they're right? Gonna get it sure. It's going to be rare, so. Yeah, like, I, th I think to answer your, uh, Kyle, your question from earlier, like, like perhaps the industry swung too far in, in that direction. Like, they were so behind and so um, concerned about, like, implementing all these things mm -hmm. that they just kind of, like, snap hired anyone that, like, yeah. knew the language or whatever without maybe having someone that could truly um, interview out like and, and discover, like, do these people actually know this stuff? Like, I remember, like, interviewing coaches right and like they put in their resume experience with k-best yeah hitting rap soto last motion whatever and see it doesn't take long to figure out if they actually have used it before right but mm -hmm. people know now like what to say like they they know the buzzwords they know the technology they can kind of like fake it but unless you really like got your hands dirty with it um you're not gonna be able to to kind of like figure out who is is who knows their shit basically mm -hmm. 100%. Um, so i'll interview guys and be like yeah you know have you ever used this technology talked to me about like calibrating it yeah and they would just make something up you know, yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, does, how's it work for you does it work really well and it's like all these technologies like for the most part like suck you know yeah <laughs> it's like oh yeah it, work, it works every time yeah, yeah it's no problem it's like all right this guy like yeah we're not hiring this guy he obviously he's <laughs> never used uh this tool before uh if he thinks it's perfect Ooh, yeah. but um uh, but yeah so so i think like um hitting especially i mean it's so much of it is like mental too so like being a good hitting coach in season is probably like 80 20 in my opinion maybe 70 30 like technical skills on the swing and approach and analytics so on and so forth and then like the rest is all uh technical skills being a smaller one being like 30 percent 70 percent is like being almost like a mental skills coach mm -hmm. right can you motivate guys can you talk them through like yeah. the grind of the a soft season. stuff you know what i mean yeah Simple like skills can you can you get them to work hard when they're when they're dragging ass can you get them to be a good teammate can you get them to be confident despite getting you know you're, you're getting your ass kicked what communication strategies like work really well for them yeah do you know it's soft skills and that's like especially when you talk about kids you know like these 18 19 year old guys some guys not even from the united states that are in cities they've never been to and, and playing under the lights for the first time and just the culture shock and all this stuff and now yeah. they they're hitting 190 in april in lakewood new jersey and like they don't want to talk about their attack angle you yeah, know what i mean yeah. it's like i'm miserable like i yeah. i miss my mom like i've never been this far from home 100 i suck like i'm gonna get released oh my god i need i need someone like and that's what i think um perhaps the industry got away from those skills a little bit yeah. and i think as in particular a hitting coach like you need to be um you need to be someone that has immense like really really good strong uh people skills mm -hmm. oh for I, sure. I really believe that like Dude. you have to be you have to let them feel confident you have to uh be nice i think you have to be a good mm -hmm. a good person someone they trust uh but also someone that can push yeah someone you know yeah. and it's just hard like it's There's not so it's much failure for yeah it's, hitting. So, it's hitting sucks it's just like the worst um Dude, th this is gonna be maybe a little bit out there uh but it's fresh in my mind because i just watched it last night i had these are the things that i was thinking about when i fucking watched the first season of uh ted lasso like i don't know if like any of the things he says to players whatever like that the, th the actual like coaching that he did was right but just like i feel like the theme that they kept fucking hammering on it's just like him being like an empathetic like yeah mm -hmm. you know good at finding what is like making them tick 
and then you know getting the most out of them or whatever yeah uh, which is which is so sick so sick. so sick and like obviously the the tough part one of one of the many but like i think pretty imperative things to tackle as a coach totally 100%, yeah dude. I, I would say like hitting being a hitting coach is is um <clears throat> like in golf you have most guys will have a swing coach right and i can't remember if i talked about this on the podcast last time i always use this so anyway they have a swing coach that's like Work, that works on their mechanics. Mm-hmm. Are you moving well? Are you striking the ball well? Um, so on and so forth. Then they have like a mental skills coach that helps them with like dealing with pressure and anxiety and and uh, fear of failure. Um, so on and so forth. And then you have your caddy who's like with you while you're competing, and he's giving you like strategy advice and also par- partially like motivating you and hopefully keeping your sights um, correct and your thoughts like in order. Yeah. Um, and a hitting coach like has to be all three of those things. Really. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Especially like the caddy part, like, and when you talk to big leaguers or anyone really, like, and, and you ask them, and I ask this question to people all the time, coaches and players, like, who is the best hitting coach you've ever had, and why? I ask like almost every player I, I've ever worked with, I ask them that question, and when I get to work with big leaguers, I ask them that question, and almost every time it's like, when you ask them why, they say, he was there for me, like, he trusted me, he pushed me, he he didn't wasn't afraid to tell me what I needed to hear, yeah. right? Um. When I was in the batter's box, like I felt like he was with me in the mm-hmm. box. Like he lived and died with my success. Like he cared about me. Like he cared about me as a person. He knew my family. He knew what I was dealing with at home. Like, yeah. and I just wanted to go to war, like for this person. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, very rarely, like, is the person, you know, who's the best coach you ever had and why? It's like, yeah, he really, like, this guy really, like, knew a bad path really well. You know? Yeah. It's just not like something they say. Uh, very often not saying it's not important it's obviously important yeah but, for sure. but we're talking about the best here <laughs> we're talking about the best yeah and i think it's especially true with like the big league level at least in my experience with like big league coaches the technical skills are like kind of hit or miss but like that piece of it like the personality and like the motivation and like mm-hmm, the energy yeah. and the friendship and like the camaraderie all that stuff it's like so good like, yeah. so good up there hands I mean, down hands yeah. down best uh best coach i've ever ever played for is uh barry aiden with his duds yeah like and would i i mean i love barry but no shot am i asking him to help me out with like my offseason programming (laughs) pitch design but if i'm gonna go to war in terms of baseball like i want to play for him yeah uh and it's it's those like you know he, he instills like more confidence in me than than I've ever felt with any other coach. Like just the the trust and conversations that we have, um, it's just so valuable. I think that's one of the things that we've kind of always been blessed with here. There was a time where I was a little worried uh, when a lot of guys, a lot of our guys were going into pro ball, split deals, all those type of things. There was an element, and like I talked to some people about it, but I was like, you know, we have our coaches have been living in this training environment, which is so success oriented and it's so safe. Yeah. There's no game failure. You know, how far removed are we from the game when you do things right mm-hmm. and you lose, you know, and then you're just like pissed off, right? Like yeah. that is a understanding how to have the combo with that player when, when those things goes wrong and know how to communicate, I think is something that, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll admit, I was like, oh, dude, I don't know how this is going to go. It's hard. <laughs> but but I think we got super blessed that we've had such great coaches that have worked with us and our trainers. And honestly, like a huge uh, testament to them is their ability to do that in pro ball, you know, yeah. Jigs, Rob, all those mm-hmm. guys, right? Like it wasn't even a question when they went in there. Yes, technical expertise, probably like best in the world in a lot of cases, yeah. but they still had the softer skills to – to be able to coach, um, you know, just like vibe with a player in yeah. that setting, that's so much more important. I think our coaches from the outside, a lot of guys just assume, yeah, they're just like super crazy technical. But I think it's still one of the one of the things that they are like world class mm-hmm. in is just talking with athletes. You know? yeah. Can you say what's up to a dude and ask how his day is? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then yeah. based on his answer, learn a lot about what's going on right now. Yeah. Not how good are you at breaking down you know side view slow-mo mechanics yeah right no, so. that's spot on man and i think we do a good job on hiring because like the trainers here like whether or not they played in the big leagues or not like they have been through it you know yeah. almost all of them like you talk about jagers and rob like those dudes were like 
they they've had failure. They put the themselves through. They it. tried it. They did everything. They put the work in. Like yeah. they failed. They gotten better. They put like they absolutely got after it in the training floor. They've experimented. Sure. Like they've been through it, right? And I think that's like uh, what players when they're when they're kind of spiraling out of control. You know, it's like they want to talk to someone that's like been there. Yeah, yeah. You know, and has some empathy and can maybe draw on, on their past experiences to help them get through it. Because like. It's different, like you said. In season, it's just different, especially in professional baseball. I'm mean, true all, all baseball, really, but like when you're going bad, it's like your world's closing in, you know. Like, mm-hmm, they, for sure, it's like you can't prepare for that as a coach. I don't care how many like courses you take or whatever. Like, it, it's just different. Like, I mean, I remember like one of my first series as a coordinator. You know, kid is like O for his first fifteen, seven punches, like not even close to making contact, just lost. Right, I mean, he's like swinging a freaking broomstick up there. You know, goes into the tunnel, slams his bat, crying. Ah, oh, I can't do it. I don't need to retire. Like this is so embarrassing. My family's here. Oh, I suck. Like all the work we did is useless. And it's just like, how do you navigate that conversation? Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's nothing you could say other than that's like technical. You're not gonna say like, oh yeah, it's cool on the cage and like fix your uh, yeah, yeah. your front uh, knee just or whatever. Throw on the K vest real quick. You no, know, it's like you just need to listen <laughs> and ask questions and be yeah. there and like get them back to being confident and like, understand. Yeah. It's gonna be okay. And that's what's so hard about hating. And it's true, yeah. too. It's like the sport, man. It's like so I think it's hard. everything, dude. What's I think it, I think it's just like just like life in 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 uh, being a leader. Yeah, being a leader. Yeah. Fuck up. I fuck up at work, and it's just like, man, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't know if yeah. I'm gonna be able to keep doing this. You know. Mm-hmm. And it's sure. like, oh shoot, I'm not starting this game. What, what does that mean? Like, yeah. farm director's here. Am I getting released? Like, oh, yeah. Dude, just just focus on your work, man. Just yeah. do, do what you can. You can control what you can. And uh, it's just a lot. There's like so much emotion involved in uh, in human performance. Like we know that. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah. Anyway, especially where the game is at now, the the amount of you know the amount of like dedication and hard work that obviously goes into it. But I think that's also a factor that plays up those anxiety and stress levels like yeah. quite a bit. Um, I was thinking about this today, actually, when I was playing catch in the cage, how nowadays I, when I, when I play catch loosely, I don't really think about things, uh, but high school, college, I feel like catch play on the line, you know, you've always got like a coach walking back and forth, watching you guys. And, you know, he's like looking for intent. Every throw matters, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't think of throwing the same way uh, at all anymore. Uh, and I was, I was like thinking to myself, I was like, I wonder if some of the like yippy stretches I've had were maybe played up by just every time I had a baseball in my hand, it was like, okay, I have to focus about everything yeah. going into this throw, which do you think maybe there's like, because hitting is, is so reactive and it's like so much more dynamic there is like less instances of severe yips in hitting i mean i don't even yeah. know if that's like or, or i guess first of all do you think like there's more yips in hitting than there is in pitching no or? there's more in pitching yeah. for sure and I, I think you look at the sports that have yips right i, I don't even like saying it out loud <laughs> but yeah. it's like La- last uh, podcast when we were with dudo i called it the y word yeah and uh lindley and dudo d- didn't know what i was talking about for a second i was like yips, really yips, oh. yeah they call it the creature sometimes oh yeah dude the thing whatever you want to call it but um yeah like you know golf um comes to mind and 100 and pitching where it's like you're manipulating an implement that's like yeah you're completely in control of it yeah the perfect storm for like a mental breakdown right but uh hitting it's like people do get the hitting version of yips i've seen it where guys get so internal that they can't even like hit a a front right thrown at them they're, they're hitting and they're not even looking at the baseball. You know, they're swinging yeah. and missing by like three. They're like asking, hey, do you get a video of that? Can I see the video? Yeah, it's like, dude, you know you have to try and hit yeah, the ball, yeah. right? Like, like, it's okay to like, you know, jailbreak and try and make it, contact. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I think that uh, it happens in hitting for sure. Um, but it's definitely more prevalent in pitching. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, what was the question? I mean, I was just talking, just general yeah. like i was thinking about you know may- maybe hitters don't get the yips as much because there isn't as much uh like of that focused really intentful mm-hmm. work um and maybe that's that's one of the better knocks against like 
T work or those really controlled environments where you put a ball on a T and you're just like really trying to, you know, experience certain movements instead of just like trying to hit the shit out of it, you know? Um, I think that's one of the better things about, again, when I try to like talk to some of the athletes and like roll back and simplify the training a bit, it's just like, you know, in between each plyo velo throw that you're doing, you're trying to like analyze your mechanics and stuff. Like, dude, just not it. Radar board up. Yeah. Like velo up. That's all you need to, you know, turn your brain off. Like just fucking go, man. Yeah. Move quickly. Exactly. You know? I'll say this, like one one of the uh mantras, I guess, of our training is, is trust your training. Oh yeah. A lot, right. And I think that hitters intuitively do this um on the defensive on the dis- uh, defensive side of the game. So mm-hmm. like you go and you do your early work field, right? Like do your short hops, your backhands, you take your ground balls and you work on your footwork. And then when the game comes, it's like the ball gets hit to you and you just try to execute the task. Yeah. Right. And you trust it. Like you you don't have thinking about your wrist angles or like yeah, yeah. you know the timing of your feet or whatever, right? They just like go into like a primal, like just just a blackout mode, right? Like yeah. it's like you're in a flow state almost. It's like just accomplish the task and, and trust yourself. And I yeah. think in hitting and and pitching, kind of like with the Ips, these guys like they don't trust themselves, right? And they don't trust that the training is gonna transfer over. Yeah. So they're trying to like you know, um, override their brain and like, cause they don't trust themselves. Like they, at the end of the day, it's like, I don't trust that I can accomplish this task so naturally. So I need to, um, you know, somehow mentally put myself in a better position. And it's like, if you're truly working and training correctly, you should be able to understand that. Like you should be able to say like, okay, the lights are on. Umpire said, play ball. Like now I'm just going to play. Yeah. And I'm going to trust that the work I did, all off season, the work I did this morning, it's just going to transfer over. Yeah. Right. And for some reason, guys have a hard time doing that on the hitting side and pitching for whatever reason. But like when you ask them about fly balls, like, Hey, do you think about, you know, your glove work when you, when you <laughs> yeah. feel like a ball in center field? It's like, what? No, I just like catch it and throw it to the cutoff. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. And like some of these plays in the, on the field are like way harder. Ridiculous. Yeah. It's like way more like, like, like difficult basically mm-hmm. than, than hitting and then the, a routine, the routine ones yeah. you know maybe the ones where they, they like practice a lot that's actually one thing uh i remember from a conversation i had with kai uh a long time ago honestly it might have been like 2017 2018 uh where like i was talking to him about something with fielding or some like idea i had and, like he check or just trying to heat check myself like, yeah you know you think this is way off or something um and he gave me like some tidbit in there where he was talking about how, you know, I think that the knowing, knowing like what kind of positions uh, or, you know, how you need to move through something is really important. But as a coach, what's more important is knowing that and then having a drill that you can give to the player without the player knowing mm-hmm. that, like almost like, eliminating their focus yeah, on geez. movement or cues right like as long as and i think he was he, he was talking about uh coaching and working with a lot of uh non-english speaking players yeah. how that almost like solved that problem immediately where he knew movement strategies cues focuses like the wrist angle all that yeah. stuff and so it was just like well i like through language can't even really tell them uh but if i can just put them in a drill or a constraint that solves that problem without them knowing yep. that's one less thing that they ever have crossed their mind when a ground ball is actually hit yeah. to them and i was like oh yeah that's just like they that makes no know. sense yeah i don't need to know what the target is necessarily yeah. that drill and like that's beautiful coaching in my opinion and like mm-hmm. and then you see it happen in a game right like some maybe he worked on a particular type of uh like footwork or whatever yeah and uh you know you drill it and then you watch it happen like in a big league game. It's like yeah. there's nothing cooler, right? And then he might not even be aware of like yeah, he doesn't even know why it was so sick yeah. in, in your toolbox like yeah. you know a month ago or whatever. It's like, no, you did the you did the footwork. Yeah, I, I know. I just fielded it you know? exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, it's a play, right? But uh, yeah, I think I think in um, people who come to drive line, people who see me work, like they give me that feedback a lot. They're like, mm-hmm. it's great. Like you don't talk to the players as much as I thought you do, you know, and I have conversations with them. Right. But for the most part, it's like, like you said, I'm creating an environment and a task. And, um, I might, depending on the player, tell them, okay, here's the, what I'm trying to accomplish movement wise. Mm-hmm. 
But for the most part, it's like, hey, I, I got an idea. Like, here's a long bat. You know, I'm going to flip you balls off your front hip, and I want to try and I want to see if you can hit it. Yeah. The left center. You know? And okay, next round, I'm going to go hard soft. I'm going to mix and break the balls, and I'm going to have you use this bat or whatever. And like, just let them let them work, right? And it's like, okay, here, okay, we're working on your attack angle. Look at this number on the iPad. I'm going to throw you these pitches. Like, go to work, and then sit back and like let them figure yeah. it out. And um, traditionally, I think guys, when they think about like a hitting lesson, mm-hmm. it's like you know, fifty fifty talking demonstration yeah. and, and like you know, talking and demonstration is one, and then like actually hitting is the other. Yeah. Or like a drive line. I mean, it's like probably ninety ten. You know, ninety. It's just like actual training movement moving hitting like mm-hmm. trying to accomplish tasks like doing different drills whatnot um and then maybe 10 percent of like yeah okay hey come here let's talk about this it's a lot way. of information but it's very it's very targeted and yeah. intentional and then after that it's just like you know i mean our assessment and retest system is crazy robust i mean on pitching side it's a yeah. whole week long but we don't do that every single week yeah it's like we do that we get as much information as we possibly can on where you are and then we set a plan and then and then after that it's just like you know yeah. it's on them mm-hmm. you know let them kind of dictate where it goes yeah. goes from there like i don't even use video that much yeah you know, it's like blasphemy in the hitting world but like <laughs> i just don't like i I, yeah. I use it um i i should say i don't use it with players a whole lot right um and i think it's interesting like i remember talking to uh some like old timers you know guys with hundreds you know several hundred homers in the big leagues and guys that have like played a lot of baseball and they're like, yeah, we never like looked at video. Wow, I was yeah. like, I don't know. I just like, I looked at videos because I wanted to like see how cool I looked or whatever, you know? Yeah. But like now it's like, and I don't think that's correct, right? But I don't think where we are now as a, as a culture, I guess, is correct where it's like a 13 year old walks in the driveline and he has like, you know, here's my swing like for the last seven I years know, and he's yeah. got a thousand swings in the video yeah. or in a folder or whatever. It's like, I don't know if video feedback is A, that beneficial because like, Typically what happens is guys like they see, they look long enough and they see something, right? Confirmation bias. Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, I saw this thing on YouTube about like, you know, the back elbow yeah. dropping early and now you look at the video, you're like, oh my God, yeah, there yeah. it is. Right. And you like, you see what you look for. And I think that most players like get caught in that trap. Oh yeah. I always want video and it's like, oh, I didn't get a hit today. It must be my swing. And then like yeah. you end up just constantly like, it's the perfect storm, right? Cause you have hitting, which is like, a high variance skill where there's going to be spurts of failure, even if you're really good. Right. Yeah. Plus people don't think like probabilistically, right. They just kind of think like, I hear my forward bats, no success, need a reason. Right. Right. And it's always the swing. Right. It's like, Oh, my swing's messed up. Exactly. And it's just like, not true. Nine times, 99 times out of a hundred probably. Um, so it kind of creates this like perfect storm. And now it's like, everyone has video feedback. Um, at their disposal right it's like i never had that and i'm only like 31 you right. know so it's like it's kind of interesting and i think that a lot of times i, I tell players like stop like yeah. stop going to the video room don't do it like train better try and create a better training environment what'd you do before the game oh i did, did some yeah. flips and some bp okay so like also get more used to like accepting failure yeah you know and just like oh, yeah well, that too. i got beat <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know it's hard i don't have to overhaul my swing today or exactly you know, like did you swing like a fish today? No, I didn't. Yeah. Well, okay. yeah. Why do you, why do you want to make a swing change, yeah. right? We talked about we talked about that on the last episode uh, with with Dudo a bit. I think that was one of my um, things I get really frustrated with um, on hitting Twitter specifically yeah. is just you know all it takes is a is a video of a certain swing to confirm whatever bias you have, mm-hmm. and you can just cherry pick whichever one. It, it's such a it, that is such a weird dynamic to me that you can have like multiple different philosophies and they can all reference the same video or they can all reference the same player but a different video of that player yeah it's like see he's doing my move here see he's doing my move in this swing you know it's like yeah well, no all right you know maybe maybe there's a lot of different movement strategies yeah right? like we were talking about exactly i think what people do too is they like they cherry pick obviously oh, but for like, sure why wouldn't you yeah it's it, it's natural yeah i mean i've i've definitely put out biomechanics threads that are cherry picked yeah but i do think there's another thing that i i've uh kind of like switched up on because i kind of rolled back in terms of like putting out a lot of like analyses case studies whatever where i was like damn there's so many ways to do this but yeah. i do think there is value in 
putting out, hey, this worked really well for this guy, you know, um, or, or this movement strategy is really good here. Yeah. I don't know if it's the best one, uh, but maybe there is some sort of like, you know, you throw out a lot of those and you're just adding to the chaos, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty unique problem. I think it's a new problem for uh, players nowadays. Oh, for sure, yeah. You know, how do I process all this thing? There's so much. It's everywhere. Yeah, and it's like... You, you can't escape it. You can't escape it. And I do the same thing. Like, when I play... Like, I film my golf swing all the time, and I'm like, oh, there it yeah. is, you know, and I'm still, like, shitty. So it's like... Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's just hard. And uh, in a lot of ways, like, I think it'd be beneficial. Like, honestly, like, if I have a kid one day um plays baseball i don't even know if i want them seeing video of their swing until they're like 13 yeah like don't even look at it just like go train well give them exit velocity feedback fast yeah. speed feedback mm -hmm. give them targets in the field like i'll make a fence in the, in the outfield and just like progressively like mm -hmm. move home plate further away as they can hit like 10 yeah. percent homers and just whatever um it doesn't matter how it looks. Like, yeah. if it's functional, it doesn't matter how it looks. And, like, if you hit a ball 105, you can start looking at video. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, like, what happens when guys look at video, like, almost every time is they go back in the cage and they swing slower. Exactly. Like, They're just thinking time. about everything. Yeah. They're thinking about what they saw in the video. Exactly. 100%. And it's like, dude, you're, especially like elite athletes, it's like your, your brain is like the best computer that the world has ever seen. I know. You know. And it's like, you think you know better. Like, yeah. you, th you think you can, like, yeah. do a better job of solving this, this movement by, like, right. you know, overriding the right cue or yeah, beforehand. Like, and that's to me what coaching is. It's how do we keep the blinders on the things that we know are um, going to lead to results and the things we know like high level performers think about in a game, which is like timing. Yeah. You know, um, uh, being like aggressive, like not being risk averse, right? mm -hmm. like being in a, in a state where like you're calm and mm -hmm. you're seeing the ball. Being prepared. Things, so, like, as we start talking about mechanics, like and hitters are thinking about like their weight distribution in the batter's box, or whatever. Yeah. It's like, taking maybe an oversimplistic way of looking at it but it's like taking like brain economy away from what mm -hmm. matters which is it's like all noise yeah it's just noise it's like and you're trying to solve like arguably one of the hardest mm -hmm. problems like your yeah. brain will ever face which is like hit this guy yeah. throws 97 with a slider right and anything that is taken away from your focus on that task alone is is wasted that's yeah. part of my uh that's part of my theory with some of the like anecdotal research that some of these Hitting coaches have put out that I've seen on on like social media about wearing headphones or like, you know, yeah. like either shutting out your um, uh, like your hearing at all or like playing a lot of music or something. It's just like I'm I'm like my thought is that you cut out enough of that. You cut out of like conversations that you hear, you know, ten feet away, um, or or something that you see like outside of the cage. And it just like reduces one more thing that your brain mm -hmm. can like one more input. And then you can focus more energy on this one input that fucking matters, which is the ball coming at you and trying to hit it. Yeah. So. It's tough, man. And like, it, it's one of those, like, you know, don't think about a pink elephant situation. Right? Where, like, <laughs> how do you get a guy to like, Hey, like, don't think about anything else. You know, just think about hitting. You're like, uh, okay. yeah. like, don't, yeah. you know, and, and like the worst thing you could ever do, right. is like tell a hitter, don't listen to the crowd. You know, mm -hmm. what are they oh, for sure, yeah. It's no crowd. And, like, that's where I think, like, and there are strategies, right, like, for getting players to, to get to that mindset, you know? And I think that, like, at least in the Phillies, like, we've really doubled down on, like, mental skills coaches being around and, like, that department's grown. And, like, they can teach actual, like, like research back strategies for getting into that, like, flow state or competitive mm -hmm. state. And I think that it's, like, such a unlock for players. Yeah. Um, Especially guys that maybe feel they're like underperforming where they, they should be. Like Dude, even if even if it's completely fake, like, you know, but like if it's a, I was doing this this research in in grad school with uh, neuro, neuromodulation yeah. with like electrical stimulation in your ears. I'm not saying it's fake. I think it probably has some like non-zero yeah. effect. Just placebo like, effects. Yeah. Is it is it gonna be? Is it like is it actually making a change to your body? Maybe not. But if it like convinces you and your brain to like stop mm, thinking about yeah. everything and like think that you're in the flow state then maybe you're just in the flow yeah. state you know yeah, yeah. And maybe you can actually perform better yeah so little thing and like finding those little like hacks or whatever could be could be you know another tool in a in a in the best coaches mm -hmm. like toolbox or yeah. whatever yeah, it's like the old joke right like breathe through your eyelids <laughs> you know like yeah. whatever it <laughs> yeah. takes to get a guy like out of his head or like 
I had a coach one time tell me um, during a mound visit, he's like, just uh, count multiples of seven while yeah. you're going through your windup. Yeah. I'm like, all right. And I'm just like, seven, 14, 21. Yeah. Like, it's better. You know, it's yeah. like silly, but like stuff like that, it gets people out of their own way, I think is yeah. pretty beneficial. And uh, it's not unique to baseball, right? You look at high performers and like performing arts, for instance, or like music and stuff. Research is like kind of all the same as far as mm-hmm. like where they are cognitively and like with their brain activity mm-hmm. at least you know like one of my favorite studies i read a few years back was like about guitar players and it was um or maybe it was just musicians but beginners like had to focus obviously on like physically what their fingers were doing mm-hmm. to like you know mm-hmm. you know get on the fretboard and make chord shapes and, and hit but doing melodies like hit different notes or whatever and like the picking hand like they had to very deliberately think about that but like the experts like were so far removed from that that the only thing that they were thinking about was like the sound or the effect of the music it, that the it effect that the music would have on the people around them yeah you know, oh, that's yeah. like so out there right yeah and i thought like on the sports world i'm like that's kind of like relevant because like when you work with beginners right yeah. like yeah you, okay hold the bat this way okay step and like you have like to do that but the players that we work with like you need to get out of that like mm-hmm. you're there dude like you've had enough reps like you need to get into the effect of your movements like i'm trying to hit the ball there i'm trying to um you know be on time i'm trying to like whatever like whatever it is like have an external narrow external focus generally and like yeah. let yourself do it and i thought that was like pretty interesting and i think a lot of players like especially now with the amount of feedback we get like everything's just turning them inward turning them inward right. and that's just not where you want to be focusing on positionally where you're at all this stuff yeah sure. just whatever or knows yeah. what right. i think that's huge on the command end totally um, i'm so in on that man yeah that's been my my hands down like biggest uh, command difference thing from college and and kind of now is uh, I mean I told I've, I've told guys on the the team that have asked like you know what do you do for command and I was like look dude I don't have to be here I have a I have a job I got a girlfriend like you know I'm doing this because it's fun if I just come out and suck like I'm not gonna keep coming out here <laughs> yeah. I'm literally here just because like I love punching people out. Yeah. Like, you know, the idea of blowing a fastball by a guy, wipeout slider, like that is, that's all I care about. I'm not going up there trying to throw strikes. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to like hit a spot. I'm literally just going up there to punch people out. And if I don't punch people out, I'm just not going to play anymore. Yeah. Like I don't have to do this, <laughs> you know, it, it, and that's just like fun. And that's honestly like, that's spot on. Intentionally where I'm at. Yeah. Right. I remember my, uh, First coaching job was with Menlo College, and um, Jake McKinley was our was our head coach, and he, he's now with the Brewers, kind of like running their player development. Mm-hmm. Awesome dude, like just oh, yeah. the best, really smart um, in a lot of ways, but in particular with like human beings, you know. And um, he told me he's like going into the season about the start, and he goes, "Just watch out!" Like every year, there's like one senior that just goes off. And he, he said this line on our feet. He goes, there's nothing more dangerous than a guy with a case of the buckets. Oh, yeah. He's like, there's going to be some kid that knows he's not going to get drafted. He's going to be a mm-hmm. uh, fucking accountant in seven months. And he's just going to have fun. And he's yeah. going to play way better than he ever has in his life. Because he's gotten rid of the need to, like you're talking about. Yeah. Right? And I think that um, we see that a lot with players. Like, as soon as you take away that, like, I need to throw strikes. Yep. I have to make contact. I have to yeah. like not make errors. You know what I mean? I it's don't. Like, I'm not going to get playing time. I'm exactly. Not get innings. You know. And then you focus on. I've put in all this work. Yeah. And it's like the best players. I mean, they have that obviously, but you have to be focused on what you focus on, right? Mm-hmm. It's like enjoy it. Like and I yeah. try and tell players. Are you that. even having fun, dude? Baseball is actually like a really fun sport 100%. to play, dude. It's yeah. so sick. Like, getting yeah. a hit, it's just, oh, just nothing feels better, dude. dude. I still fucking love Punching it. a dude out, like, yeah. oh, like see you, I'm out and walk off. Yeah. It's just, it's hard to beat, and, like, these guys forget because they get so yeah. caught in that in that world, and, like, I don't blame them. You know, it's, it's there's a lot of pressure and anxiety yeah. there, but, like, the ones that do it at the highest level, I think, yeah. at least relative to their, like, ceiling, it's, like, they are enjoying it. Yeah. And they also enjoy, like, winning and beating people too like, thousand percent why are you here yeah like <laughs> you know? go like don't let that pitcher beat you dude yeah. like fuck him go exactly, go beat him dude. go like he's, you're better than him go show yeah. him you're better than him like don't be okay like don't let him strike you out and make you walk back to the dugout right and like yeah. i think that's huge so like and again that's an outward thought like beat him is an outward thought mm-hmm. as opposed to like you know oh shoot i better 
make sure my pelvis angle of foot plant yeah. there's swing when he throws me this pitch right here yeah. or whatever yeah thousand percent yeah it's kind of a chicken or, or egg thing right but like the the big leaders that i've worked with like they're freaking competitive man like, yeah not just in Makes baseball sense. it doesn't matter like mm -hmm. be playing cards in a clubhouse or anything like they don't want to lose like, yeah and it's just something that uh i think helps you like we, i mentioned earlier risk aversion which is like the worst thing you, the worst mindset you could have like in performance in my opinion but like those guys they, like the thought of like i better not fail is just not in there it's more yeah. like i really really want to succeed and i really yeah. want to beat this person i'm here because i want to win yeah. yeah yeah because like yeah anyway. i think it's i will say it's i do think it can be tough to kind of like parse that out of people you know like i even though I said it so casually, like I, I'm not trying to say it's the easiest thing uh, to get get over those like internal, um, you know, things that you like build up and whatnot. Yeah, that's been been pretty big. And everyone's a little different, right? Oh, for it's sure. Easy for the first rounder that knows he has to go over a million before he gets released. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, he hasn't. Yeah. They they haven't had to you know be in those moments of like despair, or lack of success, where they are. Things aren't going their way, you know, not all of them, of course, yeah. but things aren't going their their way. And all of a sudden they're, you know, reading every blog, following every Instagram, every Twitter they can find. Like now they're like massing all this information and trying all these new movement strategies and stuff. There, there's definitely a bit of selection bias and like naturally gifted people just never having to worry about that, yeah. you know, maybe not never, but yeah. right. They're getting away with just like, things are going good. I, mm -hmm. I don't really need to follow that guy and hear yeah. what he has to say. So I'm just not yeah. going to do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Um, um, should we wrap? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> I, I thought there was no way we'd go this late. I got a meeting in nine minutes. So, uh, oh, uh, so we were chilling. Um, Thanks for coming on, Jay. Yeah. I, I enjoyed chatting with you guys. Yeah, dude, this was, uh, this was vibey, vibey AF. Um, next time you're in town. I mean, dude, this is a, this is way better than the last time. Remote, way better, right? dude. Oh the, yeah. The little in person setup. Dude, yeah. Got a little I got a little ambiance going on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And we lost caravan, which is Yeah, nice. caravan <laughs> left. Yeah. That'll do it though. Uh really episode uh what was that? Sixty seven? Sixty seven. Episode sixty seven. Drive on R and D podcast. Thanks, guys. Jason yeah. Thanks, See guys. you Peace. Next week. Thank you.